So we're pumping this morning. Got a pretty good sized garage here we're doing. Pretty cold, it's probably about 25 degrees. You got a little bit of ice we're dealing with, trying to trying to get some ice out of here. We got a little bit right here, a little bit there. I mean, we got really hot water in the concrete, a little bit there, just trying to scrape out what we can before we pour. The concrete should melt it, but you never know, so we like to get it out, especially if it's kind of thick. But this is where we're at today. Truck just showed up, got the second truck right there, so we're getting going. Hey everybody, it's an early late fall morning here in Maine and you know dealing with ice on the job before we show up and pour is, is pretty common. It could be just from the morning dew, it could be from a light rain the night before, but it's what would be ideal for us is if the general contractors we're working for would have this covered up with blankets and then uh, you know that would take care of this issue and then we could use the blankets afterwards too to put over the concrete after to help protect that but you know this is this is a pretty common thing for us showing up and having to take off some frost or some ice or sometimes even a little bit of snow and then get to the pour so that's that's just what we're doing we've dealt with it for years and years and years and we're going to deal with it again today and get this done it, it is really cold like I said it was about 25 I think the high of today was calling for about 40 so that's that's going to be plenty warm enough to get this done we've got 130 degree hot water in the concrete so that's going to be a big big bonus and then pouring on the styrofoam will help hold that heat in the concrete so it's going to help set it up pretty good we've got accelerators in there we got high range water reducer um, so we're going to be okay today we've we've done pours like this for 40 years this time of year and, and they they they, the key to it is really protecting it afterwards on concrete that's this green you really don't want it to rain on it and then have that rain freeze to the surface you want that concrete you want to allow that concrete enough time to cure before it gets any frozen moisture on the surface whether it's snow or ice sleet anything that's that's when you get damages to the surface is when something freezes to it and it's not cured up properly so we got three trucks coming here today, full ones. So they're ten and a half yarders, and dangle pumping this made it a lot easier since they put that steel in. They wanted to get those steel beams in the floor to, you know, to help secure them, making sure that they never move. Much safer than having them bolted to the top of the floor, and then uh, they'll go ahead and stop building this garage afterwards. So we're going to work around all those beams. Uh, dangle pumping he had to work around them too but it, it really wasn't much of an issue for us we were gonna at first we were gonna use a this is 60 feet deep you know and we it we've had a real hard time getting pump trucks up here they're just so so busy you got to give them so much notice and these people were working floor need to get these floors done so we were gonna use the conveyor truck at first and then right at the last minute the pump people called and said hey we can get you a pump tomorrow literally the day before so we gladly accepted that because we would have had to back the conveyor truck right up to one of these garage doors here on the front and he goes about 40 feet so we still would have had about you know almost 20 feet to pull the concrete which we would have got it done it just would have been a pain in the butt so having the pump dangle pump putting it right where we need it especially when it's this cold made our pour a heck of a lot easier now Darren's usually the one that handles the, the pump hose and we'll pour this out. We usually like trying to pour the whole truck out at once and you know have one or two guys breaking down behind the pump hose, one guy magging the edges and shooting grades to make sure we're not high or low because with the, uh, with the hot water and the accelerators we got in this stuff, we really only have about, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to work with it before the slump really starts changing and starts stiffening up on us that's that's one tricky part about these late falls you know is when they start adding the hot water just how hot is it you know usually they'll start at 90 degrees then they'll bump it up maybe to 110 and then as it gets colder they'll get it to 130 which is what it is today so it's always a little bit of a a little bit of a struggle figuring out just how much time you got to work with it based on how much accelerator you put in it and 
you know, you, if you don't put enough accelerator in it, even with the hot water, it gets dark here at four o'clock this time of year. So you'll be, you'll be trialing after dark, and that's just something. That's just something I really don't care to do. I don't care to have my guys doing, because once that sun goes down, you know, temps get below freezing, and uh, the concrete just doesn't set very good. You usually don't get a very good finish on it. So we got two trucks dumped out. Third one's over there mixing up, getting ready. We'll get these uh, last couple bays screeded out, get them both loaded. That's Harvey in the background there, both loading. Harvey jumped in to help us today, so that made, it, that made it a heck of a lot easier getting this done. And we'll get that third truck started on. We can tell right now that first truck already over there where Harvey's mag magging is already starting to set up. It already feels different, so that's a good sign. That's what we want right about now is after we get it screeded and bolt loaded we want to start feeling it you know firming up that means that means this thing's going to get power trial and we'll be just fine today well, we're pouring out. i don't know that's around a six probably seven inch slump we got high range water reducer in this stuff you know i've heard from some guys that their companies they they pull with don't like to mix the high range water reducers with the accelerators whether they're liquid accelerators or bag flake we there's no issues there. We never have an issue using high range water reducer so we can get our slumps up and then adding accelerator on top of that. We've we've always done that. I've done it for years and years and years. Never have any issues. All you really need to do, you can see the pace we're working at. I mean, we're we're just steady. We're not like we're hurrying too much, but we're steady. We know what we got to do. We know what we're up against. And we're just getting the concrete down. And you should be fine too if you if you have the same type of weather, the same type of climate, and you want to use you know the similar additives that we use to get your concrete to set up. You should be just fine. This is a 4,000 psi mix here today. Typically late in the fall, we'll switch from 3,500 psi mix to 4,000. Add a little bit more cement to it. You know, just just helps the heat of hydration, helps the setup times a little better. Ours have uh, full air entrainment too. We we got to put the air entrainment in it just to help protect against freeze and thaws, even on the floors that we power trowel, because these are going to be sitting outside for quite a while before they get the building buttoned up. And we don't we don't typically have any trouble troweling power troweling uh, air entrained concrete up here. We've always done it. We wouldn't do if this was summertime. We wouldn't do it, but in this time of year, we we do add the air to it. That's a 14 foot screed we're using. We always have two guys on the screeds. It's just, for us, it's faster, it's quicker, it's it's less work having two guys on there, and that's just the way we've always done it. Now, Harvey's gonna finish up with a bow float on this, and then we're gonna go get started on that upper piece up there. That has two floor drains in it, and they're kinda hard to see because they're white, but I think you can see that one right there on the left. It has a green pipe in it, and I don't know what that's for. And then just to the right of the green pipe is a floor drain. And then up where Luke is starting right there pumping is another floor drain. Yeah, you can see it a little better there. We're going to just slope a little bit of the floor to that. All this has radiant heat. You probably recognize that, except for that little lower piece right there. That little lower piece is just going to get some 2-inch bluestone over it, so all we really need to do that is... Just pour it, bull float it, and then they'll put the blue stone over it afterwards. We're gonna steel trial finish all the rest of this. We try to keep, you know, we try to keep the slumps workable, but not too wet as the as the temperatures get colder. But we also know we got to pour it loose enough to give us time to work with it. We've had, we've had concrete show up. You know, this was about an hour and 20 minute ride. You know, we've had concrete show up this time of year that's so hot that as soon as you get it down and, and raked off like I'm doing right there in the background, it's already setting and you have struggle, you know, you struggle just to screed it down. That's, that's when you know you, you got to start hurrying. You might be in a little trouble if you don't hurry. So that's, that's not a good feeling. You know, we like to at least get it down and, and get it bowl floated before it starts setting up too much. 
one good thing about this little piece is we were just matching top of wall on this that that made it a little faster just getting the concrete there is what takes most of the time so Luke and I are going to screed this together you know that's an eight foot screed I can I can or Luke or Darren or even Harvey we could all screed this by ourselves but you know why bother when you got an extra hand right there might as well have one guy just grab the outside edge and and go right off top of wall and we're magging out around that drain that had about a three-eighths of an inch slope to it so we'll get this screeded out and then we'll get it bow floated then we'll move on to that lower piece and then it's just gonna be you know for a little while it'll be uh, babysitting this waiting for it to set up enough to get a power trial on now I can tell you that Luke and Darren they stayed in power trial this and they sawed it and it gets dark at four o'clock on on this time of year they got done power trial and sawing by about 3 30 today so you know by the time we got this thing in it was close to 9 30 so in about six hours it set up pretty good for as cold as it was it never really got above 35 we're, we're right down on the ocean here today so there was a cool breeze coming in off the ocean I think what we've what we've experienced in the past is pouring on styrofoam is you know speeds up finishing time probably on a day like today an hour or two versus pouring on just cold sub base and luckily most of the floors we pour on are styrofoam underneath so that's definitely that's definitely a bonus for us and we're going to get around that second drain mag float that in what Harvey's doing right now is there's going to be a doorway right there from that little mud room going into the bigger garage but for whatever reason that stub wall was a little higher than the floor in the big garage so we're going to just ramp that down to the floor from the top of wall so there's no trip edge right there and then it'll just be one step down into that mud room we had plenty of creep Got it all in, concrete's good and hot, setting up pretty good. So we're just gonna finish this last little piece here and we'll have the pour and then we'll just sitting on it waiting for it to set up. I guess the height of that wall could have been a little bit lower. You know, we I'm actually working for the guys that do the concrete walls today. They they uh, give us all their flat work. So I'm sure they were just going by whatever the plan said. Otherwise, they might have left that wall down a little bit lower. There, so this is a case where, you know, something simple enough, I'll just grab this screed by myself, get this screeded, get that edge magged right there nice and smooth, then I'll turn it and just screed it right out. You guys in, in similar climates, you know, do you, is this basically the same way you pour in cold climates? Let me know. Do you guys got to deal with ice and snow or what do you cover your floors with? Do you cover them with blankets, use tarps and hay? What kinds of things are you guys doing to protect your concrete this time of year? So Luke's going to get that finished up, bull floated. We'll mag out the little edges where we pull the bull float up and then it's just a matter of waiting for it to power trial well again guys thanks for watching come on back we'll see you on the next one